Hey guys, it's Jessie. I know it's been a while since I did a voiceover, but for today's video, I'm going to unbox and review the Gaumon PD1560, and I'm also going to be showing you guys my painting process. And at the time before recording the video, I was planning to do a speed paint for this video, but in my mind, that would have been boring to watch so I decided to do a paint process and more like an explanation of my process instead so yeah I hope you guys like the video <laughs> while you guys see me do an unboxing here I want to say that the people at Kalmon decided to kindly send me one of their tablets to try out and to let you guys know how I feel about the tablet which is this baby right here um <laughs> yeah i'm still surprised that they picked me to try out their product which is so nice of them and <laughs> i didn't expect them to send me this kind of tablet to try out so just to keep you guys in mind that no they didn't pay me to do this they just sent me a free tablet to review which i'm grateful for but um, I want to be honest with you guys, so what I'll be saying in this review will be my honest opinion as well tell you guys what are my thoughts for this kind of screen tablet, so yeah. So here's the tablet, as you can see, it's much larger than I expected it to be. Here's me trying to measure it with a ruler. I should have gotten a tape measure instead, but oh well, this is what I have closest to me at that time. And I believe this has a display of 15.6. If I'm saying things wrong, I'll just add all of the specs and everything you want to know about the tablet is in the description as well. So go ahead and check it out. Oh yeah, carefully peel off the protective film. Also, please be careful not to peel off the anti-glare protector. That's a big no-no. Um, so yeah, please be careful peeling off the first layer of plastic. So, as you can see in the box, we got some stuff here. We got some screws for the stand. All of the wires um, the pen stand an allen wrench and the pen itself You can see here is the charger for the pen. Here's a combination HDBMI USD power cable, the power adapter, and this is the pen holder. And in here we got some eight replacement nibs inside and it hold it holds the pen pretty well <laughs> here i'm showing you guys how you can remove the pen i mean the pen no the nib from the pen piece of cake here's the stand it's kind of heavy actually Oh yeah, it also came with a bag for the tablet and I forgot to try to put the tablet in the bag for a demonstration while I was recording the unboxing but yeah, the tablet is really thin it fits in the bag perfectly it's really nice if you got the stand attached on the tablet it doesn't fit in the bag just saying as you can see, I tried the glove on that came with the tablet 
Okay, okay, I'm acting too crazy. Mm, what I meant to say is that the glove prevents your sweaty hands smudging on the tablet screen as well to prevent any scratches inflicted on the screen. And now I'm just playing around here weird. But yeah, you got everything to get the tablet working. This part where I'm trying to attach the stand on the tablet, I feel like I'm Bob the Builder. I'm just joking guys, but yeah, here's our the screws. Um, let's get the Allen wrench and here I start screwing the stand on the tablet. And my dumb self realized that I screwed the stand upside down. Sorry about that, but yeah, you can screw it upside down if you're a left-handed person, but I'm a right-handed person, so clearly I don't know what I'm doing. And yeah, I fix it here, so no worries. I just want to let you guys know that I'm still fairly new with this kind of screen tablet, because if you guys didn't know, I mentioned in one of my videos in the past where I believe I did a Q&A and I nearly only use my Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite to draw pretty much all of my drawings digital work yeah and so yeah I have experience drawing digitally I guess but Unlike on mobile devices like on a phone or like a tablet. Yeah. And I believe I've been drawing digitally for about five or six years now. <laughs> now that I think about it, that's quite long. <laughs> so I can pretty much say that I have experience. <laughs> question mark uh, I don't know just judge me um, I don't really make any sense here I'll try my best to explain things to you guys cause this is my first time reviewing something so um yeah I just wanna share in the past I really wanted to get my hands on this kind of screen tablet or a tablet but your girl's broke <laughs> in turn your girl can't afford one and yeah so yeah thank you to Galmon again truly for making this girl's dream come true okay okay Alice stop <laughs> Enough mobbling, let's just start with the review. <laughs> okay, I just want to show you guys how I set up the tablet. I just took the cable combo and start plugging everything to my laptop. As you can see here. Then afterwards, go to www.gamon.net slash download and go ahead and download the driver I downloaded the Windows driver because I'm using the Windows 10 version not the Mac version Apple has and yeah they also have a Mac version too so if you're using a Apple Mac go ahead and download the Mac version you should uninstall any existing tablet software you have and unzip and install the driver. Open the tablet software and start customizing your express keys, your pen pressure sensitivity. And if you're a left handed person, you can go to pen tablet and click workspace and go to rotate settings and turn it 
to 180 degrees so yeah if you're having problems with your tablet screen not matching your main monitor or your main screen because that happened to me it bothered me while I was using it for a few days and later on I found out that there's a way to fix it just go and press the menu button on the sides of your tablet and use the plus and minus button to navigate and press the menu button to enter an option press the auto button to go back one step I might have to change the brightness and the temperature so yeah it took me a while to get as close as my laptop screen yeah please go to crown prince i hope i'm pronouncing their name right so if you want a full tutorial in how to install her video is very helpful and it helped me because i'm not really an expert with this kind of stuff so yeah i'll just link her video on the description so you can check her video out you can pretty much start and draw so yeah so i've been drawing with this tablet for a week now maybe a little over a week and it's really been phenomenal the galmon pd1560 really is an amazing tablet i might compare it to my samsung galaxy s6 lite and how i feel about the tablet So for the screen, it's actually really big to what I'm used to with my Samsung tablet. For the Galmon, is my ideal size for a tablet. For the drawing area, is 15.6 inches compared to my Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, which is, I believe, 10.40 inches. Forgot, but what i like about the screen is that it has an anti-glare screen protector and when i draw on the screen with a pen it's not like you're drawing on a what is it called like like a glass feely texture if you know what i mean if that makes sense um yeah compared to my samsung tablet it's really satisfying in my opinion and it's really smooth too I really do like drawing on this tablet and the screen itself produces an HD resolution which is a great resolution to draw with if you're wondering what drawing software I'm using it's Metabank Paint Pro that's what I'm used to draw on because I used to use Metabank Paint in the past when I used to draw on my phone and I upgraded to Ibis Paint. So yeah, I'm kind of familiar with the software. So the pen, it's a battery powered, so you have to charge it. And actually I didn't charge it at first, and I just used the pen, and it still works though. But yeah, I charged it like an hour or less, because I don't really know how long you're supposed to charge it, the pen. And they say that the pen can last over a month if you first charge it. And yeah, I've been using the pen for a week now and it still works, which is great. For the pen pressure, the pen pressure is pretty good. It has like 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. And if you're wondering about this pen size, I believe it's like around... 7 inches and I compared to my S Pen it's only like an inch less the S Pen is thinner too compared to the Gaumon Pen which is thicker the pen is pretty comfortable to hold and it has really good resolution I really love the grip of the pen and it also had buttons on the side of it that's function perfectly so yeah there's that 
Let's talk about the keys or the shortcut keys for this tablet. It has 10 shortcut keys, which is good. It's nice they added 10 keys, which are customizable to your liking. A good tablet with lots of keys is good in my opinion. Yeah. Well, this then. This is one of my favorite things about the display and I love that they include a stand. You have to attach it yourself though. Like most products like this. It's an adjustable stand. You can adjust it in any angle to your liking. Just by dragging the switch on the stand. Which isn't a hassle as you can see here. It's very life saving because I got like really really bad posture for drawing too long. And my Samsung tablet has a stand, but it had its problems because changing the angle is very limited. So my twin sister made me this DIY stand for a tablet made out of cardboard. Yeah, which props to my sister, by the way, for helping me. <laughs> Thank you, sis. Um, I'll link her Instagram down in the description. She draws too. I didn't know. But yeah, moving on. We're getting off topic here. She made it exactly the angle I needed it to be, which was really creative of her and very helpful for my back. But yeah, I love it so much. Mm hmm. Let's start with the cons for this tablet. There's not a lot actually, by a lot, just one. The pen has no tilt support and I just no noticed it when I was doing my line art and stuff. At first, it didn't bother me as much and over time, I got used to it. So yeah, that's all the cons. I was about to mention about the screen not matching on my laptop screen, but I found out that you can fix that. Yeah, that's all. Some of them are just my personal cons, and based on my experience, it all depends on the person who's using it. So, don't take my word for it, because we're all different. Mm -hmm. For the pros, as I mentioned, the tablet has a stand, which I really, really love. The screen is big enough that I can comfortably sketch. Then hotkeys as well, to on the pen, which is really helpful. And the pen is comfortable to hold. But that's all my pros and opinions. That's everything I wanted to say for my pros and opinions about the tablet um, for my overall thoughts with the Gaumon PD1560 I really enjoy working and drawing with the tablet which now it's an upgrade for me I might use it in my future videos or future projects and the tablet is affordable it's good value for the budget cost and those are all my thoughts so check out the links below if you're interested again thank you to Gaumon yeah I'll next proceed to the painting process of the video so yeah finally to the part of the video most of you almost been waiting for Oh, by the way, disclaimer, what I'm going to be explaining here is more about my process than a tutorial. I might also give out advice to anyone trying to get into digital art, maybe. Um, yeah, there are better artists out there that may give helpful advice and tutorial videos anyway. So please, if anyone doesn't understand what I'm explaining, please don't hesitate to check another artist. I just want to share my process to anyone who are interested. My process now may be different later in the future due to me still learning and improving stuff. Um, 
for the time being this is how i paint for anyone who may not know this character i'm drawing is my persona for anyone who is new because i know everyone may not watch all my videos so yeah if anyone seen my latest stream and i drew my persona in my channel and yeah anyways i would like to explain more about it in this video so i hope you guys enjoy finding inspiration or reference my process usually starts with finding a reference or inspiration for what i'm about to draw i wasn't prepared and i didn't have any reference ready here so anyways it helps to understand and that using a reference doesn't really mean you're straight up copying um, though, if it's your intention, which is okay, just remember to give credit to the artist you're referencing from or a combination of reference, like what I did here, do my draw this again, Independence Day video, which is, I, which I use more than one reference. Choosing the right reference is also, is important. The right reference really helps me when I draw but most of the time when I'm just doodling and drawing straight up but if I don't understand something I just use a reference if you're studying from a reference photo my advice is to break down and simplify your reference if you're wondering where I get my references I just look up on Pinterest sketching I'm using the pencil brush for my sketch First of all, usually when I'm sketching, I draw shapes. Also, I'm trying my best to make my sketch look clean. If not clean, then simple so I won't get confused while painting. As well, trying not to take too long with the sketch or overwork my sketch. So I would make the sketch clean or simple, especially when I do line art. Um, I might have spent about 10 minutes or over with this sketch. For the sketch here, I made it simple as possible. If you can see, I do play around with my sketch and most of the time when I'm starting to draw or sketching and sometimes I do get art block. Um, and if I do, I just sketch random shapes or poses till I get an idea on what to draw, um, you know, and if you're confused, why am I flipping my canvas, so, so that I, so that I can spot and fix my mistakes, it's a super useful tool, and so to make sure that my proportions are correct, I do suggest to flip your canvas too, when you're drawing, so, you can fix your mistakes and to improve your sketch and your drawing, especially when you're drawing a portrait like this, just to see your drawing in a fresh angle. Um, and I do sometimes forgot to flip my canvas and the sketch would turn out weird. So flipping my canvas is one of the useful things in my process. I also keep zooming out if <laughs> a lot if you notice so um i can see if the illustration is balanced or not if that makes sense <laughs> and when i'm satisfied with my sketch i go ahead and set my sketch layer to multiply um that's all for my sketching process so for my base colors i'm not going to do line art for this one because i'm just going to proceed and lay my base color since I just want it to be more like a green. Um, next, uh, I added a new layer and I added a plain background first. And for the hue, it depends on the temperature or the environment um, my subject is in. I choose this tone for the background. Um, I select a watercolor brush and then added another layer so to start adding my base colors and shading all together and start painting as you can see i'm just working on the shading and i'm going into a bit more details i also forgot to set my sketch layer to multiply 
this one. So I'll just sketch here would blend with the base colors, if that makes sense. So after the base colors had laid down and I'm satisfied with the overall base color, I begin to proceed to merge my sketch and color layer in one layer other than the background. I switch to my watercolor brush and pencil brush and I start painting and work on the details and shadows. Um, and this part of the painting, I was not really happy on how the expression and I start working on the eyes and fixing the pupils, making it a little bigger and I start cleaning up the lines. up and adding details now we got to this part where I clean up I would just paint over the sketch that I made and just playing around my colors pretty much rendering um, adding a lot of details and whatever I feel like adding sometimes I get too overboard with the details and the problem for me is that I overwork the rendering and the details and the result would look so confusing and mess up a detail by ending up not liking it in the end. So if this happens, I just try to take a step back with my painting or my work and just take a break. Um, and when I come back, I will look at my work with a fresh eye. So it's okay to take a break with your work so you can come back and see if there's any potential fix. So I'm just adding writing and some additional details as you can see. Now I'm just lowering the saturation to the certain areas of the drawing, um, like the hair and the shoulders and other areas. So the viewer would focus more on the subject space and not the wrong areas, if that makes sense. But yeah, if your subject has high contrast, it would get more attention, and if your subject has low contrast, it would get less. Effects and adding finishing touches. If I'm content with the rendering, and now for the effects, I just select a new layer on top of my painting and select gripping. Now I select this warm color, it's more like a soft red. and start coloring over the painting um i go ahead and go to blending mode and click overlay so i can get this effect as you can see because i noticed that my colors are a little bit dull and so i decided to add more saturation to make it less dull i'm almost done with the painting just adding some finishing touches and a bit more detail um, yeah, I think that's probably about it. I hope you guys enjoy listening to me talk about my painting process um, and I hope that I explained it well and you didn't get confused. So if this video is too long, I decided to do a review plus my process in one video and I didn't expect it to be this long. I might have said so much but yeah, I apologize for that. Also, my thoughts and opinions about the Galmon. I do recommend it and I did have fun just playing around and just drawing and it's really a great experience. I don't really have any problems using it. And if you're asking me, would I recommend this tablet? I would say if you're just starting out or you, you wanna upgrade and switch to screen tablets or your looking for a tablet that suits your budget um, and you're looking for a cheaper and best alternative screen tablet um, I would really recommend the Garmin QD1560 because in my opinion this tablet is really easy to use so yeah just check out all the links below if you're interested and also check out other Garmin products that they have I believe that they have a lot to choose from, not just this one. And also, I believe that they are having a few promo sales. I'm not sure, but yeah, don't forget to check them out. 
but yeah I still do suggest that you do your own research um yeah that's all for this video and if you reach this end of the video thank you um thank you again to Gaumon and thank you so much for watching stay safe so yeah thanks again and see you in the next one bye bye